Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. Please visit our website, cscatlanta.org, for a complete list of live and recorded events. We invite you to sign up for our newsletter to stay connected to all future programs. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the cooking class today. My name is Ashley Van Stice. I'm a chef and a registered dietitian. Today, our clergy on a higher quality, more expensive ingredient because it is really, it really does make a difference in the, in the ending, the final taste. So we need to melt this chocolate. And to do that, you can either do it in the microwave, which the instructions are in your recipe, or you can do it over top of like a makeshift double boiler. I don't own a double boiler. So what I usually do is just take a regular pot, add about an inch or two of water in the bottom, bring it to like a very light simmer, and you can see the steam, maybe you can see the steam coming up, then just set a well-fitted aluminum or stainless steel bowl on top, and there you have it. You have, you're basically heating the bottom of this bowl with the steam from the water in there. So now, depending upon if you have chocolate chips, you can just pour those in. Those are very easy. If you have a bar like this, you can just break it up. The idea here is to melt the chocolate very slowly. Oh, wow, this has um, got some cool shapes, <laughs> pre-cut shapes on it. I feel like I'm like Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. Oh, wow, this is not going to break by hand. <laughs> All right, it's really thick. So let me do this on the cutting board. I'll explain what this is on my cutting board here in just a second. But anyways, let's just chunk it up. Woo! Do you see how thick it is? Chunk it up with a knife. Um, and for reference, one of these bars is about six, a little over six ounces. So when you're doing, when you're at the store, I bought two to give us a, like about 12 and a half ounces of chocolate. Your recipe calls for one pound, but you can always lower that or increase that depending upon how many people you're serving. Um, but I would say you're going to need at least, you know, 12 ounces or so just to get, get enough to work with. So that was one bar. Let me just scrape that into our bowl here. And everyone can still hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so those are going in. Let me get the other bar cut up now. The, re the ingredients for this are really flexible. Um, like today, we are going to flavor this with pistachios, dried cherries, and, and ginger. But the sky's the limit in terms of what you top your bark with. I mean, you could go with coconut. Woo, do you see that fly? <laughs> fly across the... You could go with coconut. You could go with... Um, other types of nuts, you could use like crushed up candy canes if you want to for like a peppermint flavor. Just all you have to do really to get ideas is Google chocolate bark. I mean, you will see, like I said, the sky's the limit in terms of what people have done to flavor this with. The reason why I chose dried cherries and pistachios is because it's like a red and green color, which is really fun for Christmas. But I have done the coconut before and, you know, it kind of looked like snow sprinkled on. So either way. All right, this is already starting to melt in here. Which is nice. My water is, like I said, just at a really, really, it's at the lowest setting. My water is like at a very light simmer. Okay. So let me get a spoon and we'll start to stir this around to get some of those new chunks. You may need to use a towel on the side of your bowl here. It's a little hot. What you want to avoid is allowing any of the, the moisture from the outside of the pot or the steam to drip into the chocolate. You want to keep it very dry in here. Okay, so we'll just let that hang out. I'm going to put my spoon here. Oh, 
All right. Throw these away. Okay. Are we still on? Everybody can still? Every, okay. So I'm going to move on to getting our toppings ready. I've already started with the ginger. So at the store, um, if you guys are familiar with crystallized ginger, I didn't buy that today. I couldn't find it. But crystallized ginger is what I tested the recipe with a long time ago. And that is ginger that has been coated with sugar. And it is it's pretty, it's really delicious. But the, the closest I could find was um, this product here. It's called Gin Gins. It's a chewy ginger candy. Let's see if I can do like an overhead. You guys can see what this is, what this looks like. Um, anyways, this is like super chewy. You guys see that? Um, I used to eat this when I was like having morning sickness when I was pregnant. So it has not the best memory for me, but it actually works for nausea. So, or just if you love ginger, um, it's basically two, three ingredients. Um, ginger, it's the same ingredients actually as the crystallized ginger, just sugar and ginger. Um, and they, they do add like a little tapioca starch because it is very hard and chewy. Like here's the actual candy, what it looks like. It comes in these little packages. So like individual, individually wrapped. And then I just opened it and it looks like this. It's super hard. So even when I was trying to cut it, it, you know, I mean, I don't know if you can, it's almost like a hard candy. So if you do end up using these, I would just make sure you get them cut very small. And we'll see, I've never used these with dark, with this bark before, so we will see how they work. Um, so those have been chopped up there. I'm gonna save these for something else. So this is about, a, I mean, it's definitely a tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. Your recipe calls for one tablespoon. Next, I have the these shelled pistachios. And these have, let's see, they're just raw. They don't have any salt or anything like that. Although if they did have salt, that would be okay. Um, salt and chocolate is actually not a bad thing. So two to three tablespoons. You could use a food processor when chopping all this stuff up or you could just go by hand. But I love the green color of the pistachios. They go really well with the chocolate flavor. Let me check, speaking of chocolate, let me check on those chocolate here. All right, it's getting melted, but it still needs a little bit more time, but it looks great. All right, so if you guys wanna know, this is why I call, we were joking about this at my house this morning about why the recipes that I was cooking today, and we were joking that this bark should be called famous dark chocolate bark. And that's because a long time ago, I was demonstrating this recipe. Let's call it, I think it was like 2010 or something, 2012 maybe. Um, and I was demonstrating this recipe at a, like a diabetes conference or something. And I had some left over and it was in our refrigerator at home. And my husband was saying, oh, shoot, I forgot that we had a, we have a work holiday, like a competition, a dessert competition. And I was like, well, just take the, you can enter the bark that I made for this cooking. Gym. And it was sort of a joke. And it wasn't, we weren't really like seriously um, entering. We were just, he just wanted to participate basically. So he takes it to work on a, like just a regular plate and they judged it. And it basically, it ended up winning this competition <laughs> and it was it was hilarious actually like we so we we ended up he, they ended up giving us a trophy that says like the name of his work and it says dessert master of like 2012 or whatever and they actually never did the competition ever again because so many people were upset that they didn't win and they had put so much time and effort and when they heard oh no I know <laughs> that when they heard like our story of what we entered I mean it's literally like like you see here it's four ingredients um it's not I don't know you can you can imagine the elaborate desserts that other people did I mean I didn't see any pictures of it or anything like that but I just heard that they had gone to great lengths um some people had gone to great lengths to like really go all out for this contest. So anyways, 
that is uh, my husband thought I should bring the trophy in, which we actually still have. My kids play with it. They they use it. <laughs> they play with it a lot. But um, I, the trophy didn't make it in today. But <laughs> it's always kind of a funny story. All right. So these are the dried cherries that I'm cutting up right now. Um, and sometimes when you buy dried cherries, they're usually, not always, but they're usually sweetened because they can be really sour. Well, these were unique. I'd never seen this before. These are actually, instead of being sweetened with sugar, these are actually sweetened with apple juice concentrate, which is kind of nice. So um, you might be able to find that. This brand was at Whole Foods. It's called Aurora Naturals. So I'm just chopping these up. And you can use, if you don't want to use cherries, you could use dried cranberries, and that would still give you the red color. And these aren't even that red, to be honest with you, now that I'm looking at them, they're actually kind of more black. They're so dark colored, but they're very soft and I can tell they're super fresh. Okay, so that's our topping. Once our chocolate is ready, which I'm gonna check on here, we are ready to pour it. Yep, it's ready. So every, I just know it's ready because everything is melted. It basically looks like chocolate soup. So now, I'm going to pull this pan a little closer over here. And get my towel. I don't want to burn my hand. All right. So before I do this, I have a sheet pan here with just a piece of parchment paper. You could also use aluminum foil. Definitely use aluminum or parchment. Don't skip it because it's going to be hard to get it off the actual pan. So here we go. And you can make this any shape you like, but it's not gonna really matter the shape, honestly, because at the end, we're gonna be breaking it up. It'll look like one big piece sheet of chocolate. And then at the end, we'll, we'll once it's hardened, after putting it in the refrigerator, it will harden and then we will break it up into chunks. But like I was saying with the salt, um, if you have a really nice finishing salt, like I'm not talking about like a like a salt that you would cook with. I'm talking about like a like a flake salt or um, like a like some kind of crystallized finishing salt. Um, those are really nice to sprinkle on top too if you're not scared of salt. <laughs> Because that really just, I don't know, that makes it the flavors just of the chocolate and the other ingredients really stand out. Or even just having the salted pistachios is sort of a similar idea. Is that like a sea salt that you're talking about? It could be sea salt, but there's like, there's other types of salt called finishing salt. And they come like in little tiny, usually smaller containers. And, um, and those are literally salts that you do not, you don't add to seasoning like while you're cooking. You, you add them to like the top of the salad or the top of the cookie. They're called finishing salts. Um, and that's what they are. They're used for like the, the texture, like the crunch. They're usually like a larger, larger crystal or a flake. So you yeah. think that would be in like baking aisle more than? It would be near the salt. Okay. If, if it was, if they have it, um, it's definitely like a specialty ingredient. Um, I have some at home, but they last forever. So I had some that I got as a gift when I went to culinary school and I literally still have them from years and years and years ago. And, and you know what, my, we started using them on hard boiled eggs, <laughs> just like sprinkle them and, and they come in different, like they can come in different colors if they come from different oceans. Like this one that we have is called like Mal Malachi red or something. And it's like a red sea salt. Um, okay, so what I'm doing right now is just spreading out. You can make this whatever thickness you'd like. Um, so just spread it out. And I noticed, so I may have made a little mistake here. I noticed like a drip of water that came down from the pot over here on this side. So we're gonna see, that's gonna be an experiment side. I also see another mistake I made here. This is a little chunk of chocolate that didn't get melted. <laughs> so that's gonna be another 
test area. I don't know. We'll see what happens there. All right, so now I'm just going to sprinkle the toppings. I find like doing this from a, instead of doing it down here, do it from a height, from a higher distance so that it really gets spread out. You could do one ingredient at a time, or you could, um, if you have kiddos, they would probably love doing this part. It's just really just to get an even distribution of the ingredients and have it look festive. Try not to do what I'm doing, which is letting the cherries all chunk and fall together. <laughs> they want to stick. But really, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You're just trying to get each, when you break it, you're just trying to get each piece to have a little bit of the topping. And if you, you know, if you run out and you feel like you need a little bit more, you can always chop more up. And then this is the ginger, which I think I'm going to have to be careful because it does want to stick together. I'm just kind of breaking it up in my hand so it doesn't all go in one spot. Okay, and then try to get this into the refrigerator on the, or the freezer. We might go in the freezer, actually, if we have room. I'm going to check just to make it go a little faster. Okay, I'm gonna pick some of these up that fell on the side of the pan. Okay, we're good. So let's see, you guys can see that here. And now we're just gonna, I'm just gonna transfer it. Let's see if we have room in the freezer. Um, I don't think it's gonna work because the pan is too big. So refrigerator it is, it's pretty cold in this refrigerator. So plenty of room. Okay, I'm back now. Okay. So that's going to just hang out for 30 minutes or so, and then we'll come back to it. And really the last step is just to break it up and you can make the pieces however large or small you'd like. So let me know if there's any questions or you guys can um, unmute yourself and we can chat about this recipe. Does, well, first of all, I want to know, and you can write in the chat, does anybody remember this from like years and years and years ago? <laughs> I had kind of forgotten about it, actually. I was going back through old recipes. I've, we never, I feel like it's been such a long time since we've done desserts in this class. Are you talking about the dark chocolate? Yeah, yeah. the dark okay. cho chocolate recipe. That now the next good. recipe I'm gonna demonstrate is a new one. So we haven't done this in this class before. It's a um, pumpkin spice cake bite. So I'm gonna start working on that now. But do feel free to unmute yourself and we can chat about anything you'd like. Um, okay, so for the pumpkin spice cake ball, we start with dates. These are dates that I found at the grocery store um, in the like refrigerated fresh section. And they usually have them at least during this time of year, they're, they're pretty popular, um, but they're fresh. So they're, fre they're different than what you would find in like the dried fruit aisle they're actually fresh and they need to be refrigerated. So the nice thing about this particular package is that it's already pitted. So I don't have to go through and take out the pits, but um, if they are not pitted, you can just slice in half lengthwise and just you should be able to pull the pits right out. So we need about one and a half cups. Let's see. Let me get a look of measuring. There we go. So there's different varieties of dates too. And sometimes when you buy them, they may be not so soft. These seem to be really soft, so I'm not going to have to soak them. But you could definitely soak them if they are in a little bit of water, hot water, if they are on the drier side. It just means they're a little, maybe a little, not quite as fresh. But they're still, still going to be good. OK, so do your best to just measure out a bed. And that was almost the whole container of these. This is about 12 ounces. And now. We're going to chop them in the food processor. Before I do that, though, I'm just going to kind of use my knife to chunk them up a little bit. Just to help the food processor out. And if at any point along the way, if your food processor, we'll see how these do, but if they get stuck, we may add a little bit of water to get them going. Okay, that should be fine. 
And then, and this is basically what we're using to sweeten the recipe of these dates. So they have fiber, they're super sweet. So that's nice, but they do have a lot of fiber. So we're not missing out there. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to get this back on. This and then back. Okay, all right, let's see what happens here. Okay, so it did exactly what the recipe, so in the recipe, can you guys see the food processor here? Um, your recipe says you're gonna blend it in the food processor until a ball forms, a, a paste or a ball. Well, <laughs> an actual ball formed here. So I think we're good. So I'm gonna, um, let me just see if it'll, you know, it's done, it's definitely done. So take this off. And we're gonna take that nice date ball out. <laughs> Hilarious, right? Here we go, we're gonna put it in this bowl. And then we're gonna use the food processor to blend up the other ingredients. It's super sticky. It wants to stick into the side of the food processor. Look at that. <laughs> it's like hanging on my spoon. All right. This is what, this is the ingredient that all of you see, I don't know, on the internet. These are super, these super popular, like energy balls or these energy bite type things. Some of them use dates as the sweetener. Okay. It almost asks like, like a flour. Yeah. Like dough. It's like a binder. Yeah. Like almost yeah. like a, um, like an egg or something. Oops. My spoon got lost in there. Okay. So that's good enough. I'm not going to worry about scraping this too much because all of this is gonna get combined together in just a minute anyways. So now I'm gonna put in the rest of our ingredients. So we're gonna do walnut, about one and a half cups of walnut. And these are not salted or anything, they're just raw from the bulk bin. One and a half. And then we have oats. So three fourths of a cup of rolled oatmeal or oats, not oatmeal, but oats. Let's see if I have the right measuring spoon in here. I have a third, I have a third, and I have a half. Okay, so I don't have the right, but I'm gonna use, okay. No, I'm not gonna do that, it's gonna take me forever. I'm just gonna eyeball it in my one cup. <laughs> That works. And then we have almond flour. So this, it makes this recipe gluten-free if you're into that. So this is almond flour. We need half a cup. And this is basically, almond flour is just almonds that are ground up. So you can actually make your own almond flour if you want to. It's probably less expensive that way. And to do that, you, you just use the food processor. You take your almonds, you put them in there, you just blend them until they become a powder. It's very simple. Or you can buy it. <laughs> so almond flour. And then we're gonna do some spices. So the spice combination is cinnamon, nutmeg, um, and ginger. Where's the ginger is here. Now your recipe, don't get confused. It's not on your recipe. I probably should have written ground ginger. It's a spice, it's not the, it's not the fresh ginger. So don't use fresh, you'll get a crazy flavor. Use the dried for this. So cinnamon is one and three fourths teaspoon. Let's see, do I have a teaspoon? I do. One and three fourths. This is a good time, always a good time to check your spices and see, make sure they're still fresh by the date on the bottle. Um, because if they're not fresh anymore, then there's no flavor. Uh, the nutmeg is one that I would prefer to not use it ground up like this. We had, I just had this from a different class that we did here, but um, it actually stays fresher a lot longer if you buy it in the whole, it's like a round looking spice, almost like a, like a ball. 
and use like a microplane to grate it fresh. That has a better, much better flavor, but this one is still fresh for a good while longer. Here, let's see if I can get it out. These little containers are tricky. Okay, it's coming out slow, but it is coming out. Let me see if I can get it to come out faster. I don't know why they make these. I, I feel like <laughs> this style of spice container has been around a while and it just doesn't always work so well. Here it comes. Okay, that's plenty. So that's nutmeg and then we have our ginger, which is in this bag. About half a teaspoon, it's smelling great. It smells like Christmas. Okay. And now we're gonna add, what else do we have? We have a little bit of salt and the, and the vanilla. So let me grab salt. I didn't pull that out yet. There it is. So we're gonna use, let's see, a quarter teaspoon. We're gonna eyeball it in this little container. That's funny. And then vanilla. So when you're getting vanilla, the quality of the vanilla is really going to play a big part in the taste, just like the chocolate. I don't know why, but vanilla, the quality of the vanilla, splurge for the one that's a little more expensive um, because it really does make a big difference in the taste. One, and definitely don't go the route of the vanilla. I don't know what it's called. Vanilla, it's some kind of artificial vanilla. Um, don't get that one. Get the real, it's called pure vanilla extract. So one and a half teaspoons. I'm gonna come smell that after this. So uh -huh. I can tell what's good vanilla and what I have in my spice. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember what that, I wanna say it's called imitation. Imitation vanilla or something like that. Sounds, I can't remember if it's called that or not, but. Um, Definitely seen pure vanilla extra. Pure, yeah. that's what you want, pure, mm -hmm. and it's more expensive. It's like double or triple the price, but it's so worth it. Um, it's so, so worth it. Okay, everything's in here, I believe, so we are gonna, wait, do I put the pumpkin in? For some reason, I am, I am blanking. Okay, your recipe says blah, 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 blah. Okay, oh, then we're gonna add the pumpkin. All right, so let's do this first. In the right position. Locked. Nope. Make sure it's locked in here. Look it is. How come I lost power? Hold on. Here we go. All right, so we're looking for a very fine crumb. I think we're almost, I think we're pretty much there, but. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna add the pumpkin. So the pumpkin is, I'm just using canned pumpkin. Although if you have gone to the trouble of breaking down your, your Halloween pumpkins and roasting them and making your own puree, you could use that. Um, that's what I mean by homemade. My mother-in-law actually does that for us every year and it is like amazing because then I have like four or five or six bags of frozen pumpkin, um, which the taste, the flavor is so good. But anyways, canned pumpkin will do just fine. This is, you just wanna make sure that the only ingredient in there is pumpkin. So this one is called pumpkin puree. Uh, if you see the one that's called like pumpkin pie filling or something like that, you know it's gonna have other things in there. So just buy the one that has just plain old pumpkin. All right, so two tablespoons. And if you're wondering, okay, yeah, two tablespoons, great. Now what do I do with the rest of this can? <laughs> um, you can do a lot of things with this, actually. I love using canned pumpkin in like oatmeal. So like once your oatmeal is cooked in the morning, just add a couple tablespoons of the pumpkin to it. 
along with some cinnamon and maybe some maple or mashed up bananas or uh, raisins. It's just really, really good. Or you could, you could make like a pumpkin smoothie. Those are really, really good as well. Um, usually it's ingredients like almond milk, bananas, pumpkin, maybe some spices or something like that. It's almost like a, like a pumpkin milkshake. It's really good. Um, or you can just freeze the rest of this if you're not going to use it right away. Freeze it and use it to make like pumpkin muffins or something. Okay. Here we go. One more time. All right. And so now we're going to work on adding our dates back in. So now we've got this giant. I'm going to move these measuring things out of the way. All right, we're going to work on getting this date ball back in. So spoonful by spoonful, <laughs> bear with me. There's going to be a lot of noise. We're going to get this thing to come back together. By the way, this recipe came from minimalistbaker.com. Um, I love her site. She has such good, healthy, really, re the recipes are always like great, measured perfectly. They rarely come out with an issue. All the only difference I did in this recipe, which um, I didn't, so she, on her site, if you go to this recipe, she made a, some kind of coconut, no, not, wasn't coconut. Yeah, I think it was coconut, coconut glaze. So when these come out and they're rolled into balls, she has you pouring like a, almost like a glaze or a syrup over top. I didn't go that route though. Um, I went for the simpler version. And then I'm gonna tell you guys some ways that you can, if you wanna top these or, or roll the balls and stuff, I'm gonna give you guys some options. Okay. Almost done, I think maybe one more round of blending and then we'll start forming these into balls. It smells so good. I it smells like a, like a pumpkin cake. Let's see if I can get this off. And these are the kind of things that you can make in advance, way in advance, several days in advance if you're having people over. I think that's what I like to do is make things ahead of time. All right. I think that's as good as we're going to get here. And then we're going to start scooping out and rolling into balls. And then I'll just put them on this platter. OK. They should come together pretty easily. Yeah, they're not, they're not too sticky. They're really not. So you can make them whatever size you want. But now I feel like I'm playing with my kids Play-Doh. You're basically just <laughs> rolling them forming them into balls. These are kind of big, but like I said, you can go whatever size you want. And then if you want to, you can like chop up some pistachios or some wal like some more of the walnuts, or you could do like um, coconut flakes. And you would just have that here on your cutting board. Here, I'll give you an example. We'll, we'll do the pistachios. I like the color. So we'll steal the pistachios from this other recipe. And then Give those a rough chop. Or if you're, if you're really good, you would have, have blended these in the food processor before you started making your pumpkin balls. <laughs> but coconut re works really well for this too. Like it would be, I guess, um, shredded coconut, like a really small shred of coconut. Unsweetened would, be, would work fine. 
All right. It's got to be really fine, otherwise you're going to have really big chunks of nuts on there. Okay, so then you would take your ball and you've got all your chopped nuts here and you just kind of roll it around and it just makes it look nice and festive. Have you seen these before online? I feel like these are maybe not this flavor, but this type of ball. We've done it in here, but it's been years and years and years since we did this, but um, I think I've seen it on the uh, great British baking show. Oh, okay. Anybody watches that. Nice. They're just so, I mean, you don't even have to bake them, which I just feel like I'm not a baker. I don't, that's why probably one of the reasons why we don't typically do desserts in here is I don't, it's not my thing, um, but I can handle this. Like this is not really baking in my opinion. And these are just so good. Even if you're not doing this for a, a special occasion, they're so good for just a regular every week snack. I have started with my kids just on the weekend. We pick something like muffins or um, trail mix or like energy balls. And we make them for the week so that we have like a fun homemade snack for the week. So this could totally do for, the, for something like that. They're not hard. So you just, you would just keep rolling and I love that they're not too sticky. So you could do some, and you could do different, you could roll some in coconut, you could roll some in um, the pistachios. I've even seen them rolled in like a, like a cocoa powder um, to have like a more of a chocolate. So it could be like a chocolate pumpkin spice, or you could chunk up chocolate um, if you want to do a chocolate spin on it. Kind of like the bark, this is a lot of options. A lot, a lot of options. So I think we need to taste this. So let me taste the small one and see. So I can give you the full taste flavor profile. I love it. It's, it's got the pumpkin, but it's not overpowering. And I taste all the spices. I feel like this is the kind of thing that, like, as it sits, too, the flavors will come out more. It's really good. It could definitely do chocolate. You could definitely do chocolate with it. If you wanted to do chocolate, you could add a little bit of cocoa powder into this mix, too. It's not overly sweet, either. Um, it kind of reminds me of, a, like, a, like, a donut hole, <laughs> strangely. <laughs> So I'm going to keep rolling. Does it, let me know if anyone has any questions or has anyone made anything like this before. If you have any um, ideas for different flavors we could do, let us know. I'm going to roll a few more and then I'm going to check on the chocolate in the refrigerator. Hopefully it is set. You guys are free to unmute yourself if you want to ask Ashley any questions or comments. All right, let's chat about um, like, would, it, would anybody be, be willing to cook along with me? Does anyone like think that would be fun? I have attended, since COVID started, I've attended a few conferences, like dietetics conferences where we've had cook alongs and it's, it's like super fun. Not everybody participates, but let's say out of 20 people, maybe five people cooked in their kitchen at home. So it's on a Zoom call just like this. And then they would pop in, we'd like view their screen in their kitchen and they'd show us, like you would be showing us right now, the pumpkin spice cake balls <laughs> that you made. And then you would get to have them all week long. You would get to snack on them. And it was just the funnest thing because some people had to make substitutions at their house because they couldn't find a ripe avocado or whatever it was. So we got to see what substitution they picked. And everyone's version of the recipe came out kind of different because they were using you know, they have a different, everybody has a different style. So let me know, raise your hand or give a shout out if you'd be willing to, now you would have to set up your phone as your camera or something like that. So if you feel tech savvy enough to do that, um, or we could help you figure out how to do that. I feel like that would be so fun. What do you guys think? 
Anybody, anybody? <laughs> Feeling up to the challenge. <laughs> the nice thing about it is then you get, you have something that you've cooked uh, to eat, which is always nice. Okay, I'm gonna do one more of these and then I'm gonna do some bark. Let's check on the bark. I gotta wash my hands. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna hop over here. I'm gonna change out this cutting board so that we can work on a clean surface. And hopefully our bark is set enough to cut. Um, yeah, I think it'll work. Thankfully, it's nice and cold in that refrigerator. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's one big hard piece of chocolate. And it just, this parchment paper is perfect because it literally just comes right off. Now I really feel like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory with this, <laughs> with this giant bar of chocolate. It's totally firm. So I'm gonna put it on the cutting board. And that's it, that's the serving size right there. Yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> serving one. <laughs> um, and then you can just take your knife and I don't know, I just kind of chunk it. Triangles for some reason are sounding good. I don't know. But the more create, I feel like the more creative the cuts are, it doesn't really work to break it. But whatever makes sense. So then you have these pieces and I've got them here on a red plate. If you have like a Christmas plate or something or some kind of festive serving platter. I mean, you could literally go with whatever shape. Now, I don't, I don't see any problems with those pieces. Oh, here's the chunk. So it has a bit of a mountain, I, I guess you could say, here on this one part. But other than that, I don't see any problems with that drop of water that fell onto the pan. So no big deal. But do try to avoid, if you can, any drips like that. What is your concern with water getting into it? I don't know that it just will, it will, it will like mix into the chocolate and then it will make like a watery. Um, I'm not, I don't know. So much of it is science around like the chocolate and how it melts and the melting point and all that. And I, I don't know exactly what the deal is with the water, but in terms of like science, I just know that it's not good. <laughs> So, and even, okay, so here's another idea too. If you wanna do lots of different flavors of these, melt your chocolate. You could even do like two pounds of melted chocolate. You could have two different sheet pans. So um, if you have a lot of guests, you can, or if you wanna give these away as gifts, like neighbor, neighborly gifts or something, um, melt all your chocolate, have two sheet pans, do one flavor on this side, do one flavor on this side. The, the candy cane, the chunked up candy canes is delicious too um, for Christmas. I just recently was seeking out candy canes that did not have red dye. And there's actually a lot of options. So if you want to do candy canes and they were all, most of them were at Whole Foods, but some, but Trader Joe's had a couple candy cane type. It wasn't exact, like it wasn't a traditional candy cane, but it was like a candy cane type candy um, that were flavored with or colored with like beets. So, but obviously they don't taste like beets. I've just been really conscious of trying to avoid the food dyes for my kids and they really wanted candy canes. So there are definitely options out there. I was thinking as you were adding the crayon theories, but what about pomegranate? I don't, I don't know if they have dried pomegranate. But... Uh, let's see, dried. I feel like there is some kind of dry, I think it's actually a goji berry, what I'm thinking of. There is like a dried goji berry. It's not very sweet, but it is, I've done it before, it's pretty good. Um, there's no such thing as far as I know as, as, a, as of a dried uh, pomegranate. It would definitely need to be dried because the fresh won't hold up 
and it will start to like release juices and things. But okay, so you guys, how easy. This is what, remember, this is what won the dessert contest. <laughs> and it had been made and traveled in the car like several times at a cooking demo. So, anyways, so easy and just such a crowd pleaser. Four, three, four ingredients, depending upon how many toppings you want to add. Um, such a good, here, let's put these next to each other. So we have the, let's see, we're going to do the bark here. I got to make sure I'm in frame with the camera. And then I, you want to put them here? Okay. So we have the pumpkin spice cake balls. And the, and some of these I coated with the pistachio and some are just plain. And then we have the, the, uh, the bark. So, so good. Both are just so easy. No stress. That's the goal for holiday, especially the dessert part. It's supposed to be fun and delicious. They look <laughs> fantastic. And you would be the star of your Christmas cookie exchange. These. <laughs> I can definitely see why it's the famous award-winning bark. It looks like a Jackson Pollock. <laughs> Lots of comments of how yummy they look. Oh, good. All right, guys. Well, thanks, Ashley. That it was really fun. Oh, good. I heard someone say thank you. It was fun. Oh, yeah. cool. I'm glad you liked it. All right. Well, if um, I guess I won't talk to you guys again. And so have a wonderful holiday celebration, Christmas, whatever holidays you celebrate. Um, happy New Year. Absolutely. Thank you, Ashley. And we will Thank be you, back. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. <laughs> Early January with warm wintry soups. So stay Ooh. tuned. We will be announcing that in our next newsletter. And thank well, you guys so much for joining us today. Good. Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for this program. If you're interested in other live or recorded programs, please visit the online program tab of our website, cscatlanta.org. Or follow us on Facebook. We'll be sharing additional information on upcoming programs.